your guy who is very confident in himself, confident in his abilities. How hard a blow was that to your ego? The fact that you went there to your alma mater, it worked out at first, but in the end, it didn't work out. Was that hard to get well, over? Well, I think that, you know, it, we, we, I felt that we were headed in the right direction. You know, the, we had two BCS years followed by a bad third year when, you know, a bunch of bad recruiting years all hit at the same time, mine being one of them. Okay, so I'll throw myself into that mix. Then the fourth year, we were five, a little over 500, but some of the games we lost, we lost bad. And the fifth year, now we're a 500 team, and every game we lost was in the last minute of the game. And I felt that we were just, we were just about there. And, you know, I understand Notre Dame letting me go. You know, it's about wins and losses. I just felt that, you know, that we, we kind of, I talked about how it takes a five-year cycle to kind of get it in the right, right position. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, hey, look, at life moves on as a coach. You get used to that. You know, that it was the biggest regret I have from being let go from Notre Dame besides the stress it put on my wife and son, which, which was a lot of stress, and my special needs daughter. That was my biggest regret. But my only thing I wanted to do when I went to Notre Dame, only one, my son asked me the first day we were there, <clears throat> when he looked up on the wall and saw all the legendary coaches on the wall and said, Dad, what, would you, what do you want to accomplish here? He was a young kid at the time. I said, Charlie, when I leave, I just want people to say, I'm glad we hired that guy. And that didn't come to fruition. And that is my biggest regret football-wise. Okay, my biggest, but, but as a family guy, the stress that put on your wife and your son and your daughter, that's really the thing that, you know, that was, that was tough. I have to say, I feel like I've I need to hire your lawyer because you have like the best contract. Yeah, there's two sides to that though. Yeah. You know, everyone knows about uh, no offset. Right. Okay, which is why they had to pay me. You right. Know, which, uh, when the fact that they let me go it was a win for me. The flip side of that is I also had no offset. So when opportunities c came along, I couldn't, I couldn't look at them because all that money they had to pay me I would have had to pay them. Mm. So people look at, that's a one-sided argument mainly because they let me go and they, I th they let me go without realizing that that's the way the contract was because that, you know, it was a new, a new AD and, you know, things had changed and, you know, I still get hammered. By the way, two more years, they're going to be still talking about it right. because it'll go on for two more years. Right. You get two, you get payments. I mean, you're getting more money now than the current coach. No, that's not true. Oh, that's not true. No, okay. No, that's totally not true. It's the way <laughs> Sounds Dame, great though. <laughs> you know, that's what they put out there, but Notre Dame pays a different way. They, the head coach has some money that's paid by the school and then some money that's paid by the vendors. So that is a, that is a total fallacy. <laughs> it's not even close. But, not even close. But, but people want to write that or they can go ahead and write that. Okay. Okay.